What's going on guys? Vegito here, and I just want to say happy two-year anniversary! Now, before we get the video started, I want to say a few quick words. Hopefully I won't take too long on this since I know a couple of you guys got mad at me for taking too long with updates when I put out What If Cynthia Sponsored Ash Part 1 on last year. First is that we did not reach our sub goal, unfortunately. I mean, I know one thing that I probably could have done to fix that is uploading more often. Since the YouTube algorithm um, hates it when I take such long breaks between uploads. So let's try and fix that together. i trying to form up a team on Discord to help with scripting and brainstorming ideas. Since writer's block is definitely a big factor in the massive gap between videos. I'm still going to be optimistic about this and keep the 5k sub goal by the end of the year, so hopefully we can reach that. Okay, next order of business, the updated plans for the What If Rotation and the Fotara Podcast. First, the What If Rotation. After the second What If rotation, I plan to focus on mainly the What Ifs that are closer to completion for a while, before I start any more new stories. After this one, obviously. Since after a Discord discussion with Ronan Charizard on Discord, he made some valid points that I have a lot of unfinished stories, so I'm going to try to fix that. So I have no current plans for any new Pokemon What Ifs at this time. Unless it's either a subscriber milestone or a special occasion. Now for the Potara Podcast. The Potara Podcast mainly focuses on NON Pokemon What Ifs. As for what shows the Potara Podcast best will cover, I will link the Potara Podcast introduction video in both the description and the iCard. Also, all of the non-Pokemon What Ifs will be moving to the Potara Podcast. Now, one last thing before we get started, I'll go ahead and show you the analytical stat bar showing that currently the 68% of people that watch my content are not subscribed. So. Feel free to hit that big red subscribe button if you haven't already. Since it's free and if you feel the channel and its content are no longer for you, you can unsubscribe. Also, you can support the channel by becoming a channel member where you can get some cool perks such as early access to all my content and even channel member exclusive stories. I'll still release these stories for non-channel members just at a later date. And also, you'll receive a shout out at the end of every video. Now, let's get this two year anniversary party started. Chapter one, Izuka Midoriya, Origin. We begin this story in Pallet Town in the Kanto region, where we see a Pokemon battle between two boys, a boy with atomic blonde hair and red eyes using a Cyndaquil and a boy with messy green hair, green eyes, and freckles, using a Feebas. The boys' names are Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo. The battle begins, with Bakugo ordering his starter to use Smokescreen, mainly to lower Feebas' accuracy, but also to allow Cyndaquil to use Tackle on Daku's Feebas. With Bakugo taunting his childhood friend. Seriously, Deku! Do you really think your weak Pokemon can defeat my Cyndaquil? With Deku trying to reassure his Feebas that as long as they try their best, that's all sh that should matter. Bakugo shoots this idea down real quick, with him saying, Deku, your partner is a Feebas! The most useless Pokemon there is! Do you really think the most useless Pokemon there is can beat a Pokemon bred to be strong? For context, Bakugo's family breeds Cyndaquil for Professor Elm, with Bakugo being given one of the best ones out of the batch, with Bakugo yelling, Cyndaquil, put Deku in his sorry excuse for a Pokemon back in their place with a double kick. Cyndaquil can learn double kick through egg move, 
Feebas gets knocked out without her being able to land a single hit on Cyndaquil. Bakugo calls back his Cyndaquil and leaves, but not without taking one last jab at Deku with him saying, Next time, you might want to catch a Pokemon that can actually put up a fight. A few days pass, with Deku still being darn the dumps about his loss against Bakugo. He meets a man that watched his battle with Bakugo, with the man introducing himself as Toshinori Yagi, aka All Might, the Kanto Regional Champion, with All Might saying that he can train Deku to be a strong trainer. All Might asks Deku to send out his Feebas so he can see what he has to work with. Deku complies, sending out his fish into a nearby river, with All Might thinking maybe this kid might be able to become his successor as both Kanto's champion and as Kanto's symbol of peace. So All Might decides to plan out a training regiment to not only help Feebas learn tackle, but also to help improve her other abilities. A few months pass with Feebas being successfully being able to learn tackle. Thanks to training with All Might and his Metagross. Feebas' physical strength also increases, allowing Feebas' tackle to be much more powerful than normal, almost equalizing the power of a takedown. I'm not saying Deku's Feebas directly learned takedown, I'm saying Feebas' tackle is almost equal to the power of a takedown. Before Deku leaves to go challenge Bakugo to a rematch, All Might ends up pulling a Pokemon egg out of his bag. This egg is rather, also rather close to hatching, with Deku thanking All Might for the egg. All Might also pulls something else out of his bag and tells Deku to give it to his Feebas when the time he feels the time is right. This item is revealed to be a prison scale, which can help Deku's Feebas evolve into a beautiful Milotic. So now with the Pokemon Egg, Deku heads off to Bakugo's house and challenges him to a rematch. With Bakugo asking Deku if he actually caught a Pokemon that can actually put up a fight. With Deku saying that he didn't, although he did train up his Feebas. With Bakugo also noticing that Deku's egg is starting to hatch. With the blonde telling Deku about it. With the egg hatching revealing a small blue canine Pokemon. Bakugo asks Deku how he managed to get a rare Pokemon like that with Deku lying and saying that Riolu was a gift from his dad. Deku's dad still works overseas in this timeline, with him working in the faraway Kalos region. This will come into play later. Bakugo ends up buying it and makes the battle a two on two, with Deku using Feebas and Riolu, with Bakugo using Cyndaquil and Mankey. A rather recent catch for the blonde. Deku and Bakugo send out Mankey and Feebas respectively. Bakugo orders Mankey to use Fury Swipes, while Deku orders Feebas to use Tackle, with Bakugo being surprised at its power. Bakugo orders Mankey to use Brick Break, which connects, leaving Feebas close to fainting. Bakugo yells out, Mankey, let's finish this! Use Cross Chop! Feebas ends up getting knocked out from this, making the battle two on one. Deku decides to send out his newest Pokemon, Riolu. Riolu uses Work Up to increase his attack and special attack stats, with Riolu using one of the egg moves that all my bread onto Riolu, Meteor Mash. With this move managing to knock out Mankey to even the score, although it does have a slight effect of increasing Riolu's attack stat. Bakugo, being surprised that Deku was able to defeat one of his Pokemon, and so he proceeds to send out his starter, Cyndaquil. Riolu gets in a battle stance and uses another workup. Cyndaquil uses Quick Attack to hit Riolu, although Riolu was prepared for this, hitting Cyndaquil in the gut with a Meteor Mash. With this knocking the wind out of Cyndaquil, 
keeping it close to fainting. Bakyo yells at his starter to get back up, with Cyndaquil starting to glow in a white light as it evolves into Quilava. Bakyo then yells out, Quilava, put Deku back in his place! Use Lava Plume! Deku then orders his Riolu to try and dodge as best as he can, with one of the Lava Plumes hitting Riolu, leaving him with a burn. This also causes Riolu's attack stat to go down. Deku asks Riolu if he can keep fighting, with Riolu looking back and confidently nodding, with Riolu charging up another Meteor Mash, with this managing to knock out Kolava, allowing Deku to defeat Bakugo in a Pokemon battle for the first time in his life. Deku and Bakugo head to the Pokemon Pokemon Center to get their Pokemon healed up before they head out on their journeys the next day. Deku, after saying goodbye to Inko, heads up to the Pallet Town with his Broton phone, with the Pokedex installed on it and some Pokeballs. Deku arrives on Route 1 and encounters a wild Rufflet. Deku thinks this is a good opportunity to strengthen his team, so he sends out Riolu to battle it. The battle begins with Deku ordering a quick attack from Riolu, with Rufflet being rather dazed by this, although Rufflet uses Peck to hit Riolu for super effective damage. Deku then decides to throw a Pokeball at the Wild Rufflet, with Deku managing to catch the Wild Rufflet with Deku being rather excited at the first Pokemon that he caught on his own. Adds Rufflet to his team and increases his team to three Pokemon. I know some of you are probably saying, didn't Deku catch Feebas on his own? Not exactly. You see, Feebas was a Pokemon that Deku befriended as a kid that Inko ended up catching for him in the event that Deku decides to go on a Pokemon journey. Deku then heads to a river and proceeds to train up his three Pokemon, prepare himself for the gym challenge. All Might told him about the gym challenge, since if Deku wants to become the next symbol of peace, he's going to have to fight through the region's gyms and win the Pokemon League tournament, as well as being able to best the Elite Four and the Champion, which is All Might in this case. Deku sends out his three Pokemon, with Deku deciding to train with all three individually, Riolu's training mainly consists of moving boulders to increase his physical strength. Rufflet's training involves improving its flying and battle skills by having it spar with Riolu, with Rufflet managing to learn how to use wing attack. As for Feebas, Deku tries to teach Feebas how to use Water Pulse, mainly so she can have an attack besides Tackle, with Feebas managing to learn how to use Water Pulse with the help of Deku, Riolu, and Rufflet. Deku decides to camp out for tonight and head to Viridian City the next day. The next morning, after giving all of his Pokemon and himself a good breakfast, Deku heads on to Viridian City, where he's stuck up to the Pokemon Center where he sees a short girl with auburn hair and with eyes that match in color, looking rather distressed. Deku heads up to the girl and asks her what's wrong, with the girl saying that the Viridian City Pokemon Contest is about to start and she can't find her Jigglypuff, who she was planning to enter the contest with. Deku says that he'll help her look for Jigglypuff, which the girl thanks him for. She also introduces herself as Ochako Uraraka, so that Deku can help her look. After a couple of hours, the pair find Jigglypuff, trying to practice her singing to some wild Pokemon, but they fell asleep. Much to Jigglypuff's dismay, Deku and Uraraka decide to head to the Viridian Contest, where Uraraka manages to register herself and Jigglypuff with Deku deciding to watch and support his new friend. Uraraka does pretty well, although she loses in the semi-finals. Deku also asks Uraraka if she'd be willing to travel the region with him. Uraraka agrees, mainly due to the fact that she thinks traveling on a journey with someone else is a lot more fun than traveling alone. 
The next day after the contest, Deku Uraraka head off to Viridian Forest to travel to Pewter City for Deku's first gym battle. The trek through Viridian Forest is rather uneventful, although Uraraka does reveal that she has a gimme ghoul, but she tells Deku that she's having trouble trying to get it to evolve. Her duo arrive in Pewter City and get their Pokemon healed up, before deciding to challenge the gym the next day. The next day, Deku and Uraraka head to the Pewter Gym, where Deku is surprised to see a giant pool before a battlefield with small all circular platforms, mainly so land-based Pokemon aka non-water types be able to stand on them, where Deku Ra challenges its leader, Tamaki Amajiki, a water type specialist. I picked water since Tamaki's quirk grants him the ability to manifest the physical characteristics of anything he's eaten, with Takoyaki and clams being the food that he eats the most for his quirk. And since clams and Takoyaki are seafood, I figured a water type specialty, specialty would make the most sense. Deku and Tamaki agreed to a 2 on 2 single battle, with Deku using Rufflet and Riolu against Tamaki's Shelder and Octillery. Riolu and Shelder come out first, with Riolu getting into a battle stance and starting off the battle with a workup, increasing his physical and special attack. Shelder goes for an Ice Shard, which manages to connect, although Deku orders Riolu to counter with a Meteor Mash. This connects, leaving Shelder rather dazed, allowing Deku to capitalize on this and knock out Shelder with a Force Palm, taking Tamaki down to one. Tamaki ultimately decides to stop holding back and sends in his Ace, Octillery! I wanted to give Tamaki an octopus Pokemon to show his love for Takoyaki. And for those that don't know, Takoyaki are filled with octopus, and Octillery just so happens to be an octopus. Deku ultimately decides to call back Riolu to get some rest. Deku then sends out Rufflet for his second Pokemon, with Rufflet managing to use ranged attacks from the sky, mainly since Deku would know to avoid Octillery's cannon. However, unbeknownst to Deku, Tamaki actually taught his Octillery to use Ice Beam for situations just like this. So Octillery charges up an Ice Beam in its cannon and fires it at Rufflet, freezing its wing in place taking it out of the sky and causing it to fall in the pool. Tamaki orders Octillery to capitalize on this and use Octazooka to leave Rufflet unconscious. Deku, now down to his last Pokemon, decides to call back out his Riolu. The battle resumes with Riolu using Workup to increase its offensive stats before blitzing Octillery with Quick Attack. Octillery decides to use Ice Beam on the battlefield, freezing it in place, which also makes it harder for Riolu to move. Deku decides to order Riolu to use Meteor Mash on his feet to get himself free from the ice, and to use Quick Attack while charging up a Meteor Mash, which knocks out Octillery in one shot, mainly due to the speed that Riolu is moving while using Quick Attack would increase the mass of the Meteor Mash by a lot, which would increase the damage exponentially. Deku gets his first Gym Badge, the Title Badge. And with that, I think this is a good place to lead the story off for right now. So what did you guys think of the two year anniversary special? What are your predictions for part two? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Now, before we get out of here, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to our channel members. In the base Vegito tier, we have James Holland. Thanks so much for the support. It really goes a long way to help the channel out. Also, before we go, I want to also give a quick shout out to Val for making the Deku and Bakugo renders for me. They turned out great. 
Now then, I don't really have a preview to share today, so I'll get on out of here. Peace!